Today's talk is about writing a risk management policy. Also, it's going to be a little bit shorter than our normal live YouTube videos. Um, I'm visiting a, my cousin out in Portland, Oregon, so I'm on a trip and I want to be a little bit considerate of him and keep it short while they're uh, giving me some privacy and quiet. So number one, the best advice I can give you to write your own risk management policy is purchase the European version of the 24971-2020 guidance document. So there's a 14971 standard for risk management, and then there's a guidance document, the 24971 guidance document, and it's a 2020 version. It's called ISO TR 24971-2020. Now, this risk management guidance document doesn't go step by step how to implement your quality system. It doesn't go, uh, I'm sorry, your risk management system. That's in a lot of other documents and they say right in the scope, that wasn't why they wrote this. What they wanted to do is focus on a couple of specific areas that people weren't doing well or weren't doing at all. And one of those areas is the risk management policy. So I thought I would cover that. They put a little bit of content, maybe a paragraph or two, in the actual body of the guidance document. But in the annexes, Annex C is dedicated to writing your risk management policy. So you jump to Section C or Annex C and you read through that and it actually gives you an outline of what should be in there. Those are the elements of what should be in your risk management policy. Now, one of the things that might not be clear to you is when am I supposed to write this risk management policy and where does it fit in the hierarchy of my documentation for my quality system. And that's one of the things you have to identify in your quality manual. What's the hierarchy of documentation in my quality system? The risk management policy is a policy document. It's typically at the very top of the pyramid if you have a pyramid for your hierarchy of your documents in your quality system, along with your quality policy. So you have a risk management policy and you have a quality policy. Those two documents might not be the same format, they might not be the same length, but they're in the same hierarchy of your quality system. The quality system policy typically is a one-page document that's signed and people put in a plaque on the wall in the lobby of their company. And they usually give one of these quality policies to everybody in the company. And they usually also put it in their quality manual. The risk management policy, you might put a reference to the risk management policy in your quality manual, and I definitely recommend that. You would mention it is one of the elements in the policy section of that pyramid, but it probably needs to be a separate controlled document. So in our quality system, it's policy number uh, 005. And so um, Mary Martinez, she was one of the employees that recently left our company. Uh, she went to do a sales job, but she did a fantastic job of the work that she was doing for us. And one of the things I asked her to do in the last year was to create a risk management policy for one of our clients, a, a template for them, so they would be able to write their own. And it, it, they didn't really know how to be like, here, I'll just have Mary create a template for you and you can fill in the blanks. So anybody that um, signs up for our subscription to new blogs that we post on medicaldeviceacademy.com, in three weeks, I'm gonna be putting up a posting about how to write a risk management policy and we'll have a form in there where you can download that template for a risk management policy. So giving you a little heads up, if you watch this video, make sure you sign up for our um, new blogs uh, subscriber list. You can do that on our blog page, Medical Device Academy forward slash blogs, and it will actually give you a link. You sign up for that and you can download the template. Now, I'm going to give you some details about how to use this template. It's really important. So you might want to watch this a couple of times and, and then read the standard so the, or the guidance document for the standard. So step one, you create a, con, a controlled document number for your risk management policy in your quality system. You reference that policy in your manual. That would be step two. Step three, you're going to identify it as part of that pyramid. So that's, that's step three. Step four, you're actually going to take this template and you're going to fill it in with the things that are for specific to your company. The first section that's required 
is a purpose section. So what is the purpose of the risk management policy? We've filled that in, but you might want to modify that. And if you're looking at what is supposed to be in the purpose section, go right to Annex C of 24971, and it'll tell you what you should be putting in the purpose section. But really, ultimately, the risk management uh, policy is supposed to be able to help you identify what is an acceptable risk and what's not an acceptable risk. And it might not be and probably shouldn't be the same for all the products in your company. So having one policy for all the company is okay, but if you have different product families, you probably need to identify what the different policy and decisions are going to be for each each family of medical devices that your company manufactures. If you only make one product, really easy. But you might have to update it when you come up with product number two. That's really important. And I'm going to explain how you cover that in a second. Number two, you have to have an element in the, the risk management policy for scope of the risk management policy. So you need to identify what product families this covers, what's the scope of that, and that should be identified right in, in the scope section. We have that section in here. Um, with all our, our control documents, we always have, this is, what the, um, this is what the revision history is. So you'll have a revision history on, on your risk management policy. Um, in a quality policy, you might just have the date, but we actually will have a revision history so you can see the changes that you've made in your risk management policy over time, and a notified body is going to want to see that. Also, any references. The obvious two that everybody should be including would be ISO 14971 2019, the risk management standard, and this guidance document, Annex C, where you get all the information on how to create your risk management policy. In addition to that, any specific international standards that apply to one or more of your families of products. So if you have electromedical devices, the most obvious one would be IEC 6601-1, as an example. And you might have some statement in your policy about um, you, you want to uh, make sure devices are safe for single fault failure. That would be an example. So these principles of design for electromedical devices, you want to have that in your policy for all the electromedical devices. Now, if you make some devices that are not electromedical, that wouldn't apply to those family of devices. So you can split up your policy. You can have sections of the policy that are specific to product families, but you could also split it up into more divisions of product families that are based on the characteristics of the device, such as sterile products must comply with this. Um, any electromedical devices must comply with this. So you break it down into the characteristics of the device. That's another way to organize your policy. Another approach might be by the intended use. So you might have two, three, four different intended uses and you want to have very different risk management policies for those. You, you can break it down that way. Another way would be the patient population. If you have specific pediatric uh, devices, you might want to have a different risk management policy for those pediatric devices. So those are different ways you can break down the different um, sections. But rather than having it be, you know, this is risk management policy for this one, and you have a totally different risk management policy for another one, the recommendation is to have one policy for the whole company, top level of your quality system. And then in there, you have subsections. So these are the general requirements. Just like we have in Annex 1, they have general safety and performance requirements. Have some general requirements for all your products in your company. And then have some specific requirements that are related to either the characteristics of the device, the intended use of the device, the patient population of the device, or you could even go so far as the individual device families. So that would be my approach. So it would... It would resemble the structure of Annex 1 in the, in the MDR or the IVDR. I wouldn't make it anywhere near that long, but think of it in structure, a general requirement, and then a structure for either the characteristics or the intended patient population or the intended use or the actual individual device families. And so that would be a good way to organize your quality policy. Uh, the next section will be approaches to risk controls. 
So there are lots of risk controls that you can implement. You still have to make sure you're compliant with the requirements for priorities of implementing risk controls. But then in addition to that, you might be more specific on how you're going to address certain requirements. Like your company, um, if your company manufactures and specializes in collagen-based medical devices, you're not going to have a risk management policy that says animal-derived products are unsafe and we're not going to use them because that's all you do. <laughs> um, in, whereas in another company, you might say, this is one of our policies. We're not going to use any um, products that are that are derived from animal products. We're not going to use any products that are derived from human tissues. We're not going to use anything that is... Um, is using unsafe uh, carcinogenic materials and is on that Rojas list. Uh, we're not going to use any phthalates. Those could be things that you put in your policy. But if you're a company that specializes in those types of devices, that's not going to be part of your risk management policy. So that's why you, you need to decide what's acceptable, what's not. And it's not the same for every type of product out there. And what would be appropriate for a low-risk class 1 device would not be appropriate for a class 3 device an active implantable device in your body is going to have inherent risk, but it's also going to save lives. And tongue depressors, not so much. <laughs> you don't want them in the same risk policy or risk management category, um, or at least not the same section of your risk management policy. So you, here's what we do for the class ones. Here what, here's what we do for the class twos. You could break it down by classification. That's up to you. But the, your approach to what is acceptable and how are you gonna implement the risk controls for the different product families or different categories of devices, that should be in that section of the policy. And we have a section for that and we cross-reference to the uh, 24971 guidance saying, this is where that can be found. And then the last uh, section, you're gonna say what the requirements are for review and approval of your risk management policy in review and approval of risks. So how often are you going to review risks? How often are you going to review your policy? How often are you going to decide that whether these are acceptable or not? And when is that going to be done? That should all be included in this risk manager policy. So short answer to this whole thing is, if you want to know how to write your own risk manager policy, go buy ISO TR 24971. And for those of you that have stayed till the very end, there's a link down below for, hey, this is where I go to the uh, Estonian website to I purchase a less expensive version. It's the same version as everybody else. It's just sold by the Estonian Standards Organization. So we're going to provide a hyperlink down there. Save yourself some money. Always when you buy from there, make sure that you buy um, a multi-user license so you can actually print it and share it with another person in your organization because you're going to have more than one person in your company doing risk management. That's really important. Save yourself some money and make sure you're still compliant with the licenses. The single user license requires special software and really limits the utility of the, the guidance document. So make sure you do that. Um, remember, sign up for the new blog uh, announcements. So you get an email saying, hey, we updated our blog and here's what it's about. You'll see in three weeks on a Tuesday, hey, we've, we published a blog on how to write a risk management policy and we provided a form for you to download our template. So I hope that will really help you and make your job a little bit easier. But in the next three weeks, the homework for you is go to the Estonian website, buy the standard, read that section on Annex C, and start thinking about how you're going to organize your policy according to that standard. And then you can fill in the policy when you, when you download that. Or don't wait and create your own. Thank you, everybody, and I hope this helps. Bye-bye.